Hey, what's up guys? Little man with the big opinion here. In today's video, <clears throat> uh, I saw another prepping channel do a poll on when do you think, uh, you know, crap's gonna hit the fan. And one of his answers that at the time of looking at it, he had several thousand people who had voted. But he had years set from like 1 to 10. <clears throat> and then his very last answer was, <clears throat> we're already there. People just don't realize it. And so I was going to talk about that. I'm going to talk about, you know, if you think we're in that scenario of, what are you actively doing? <clears throat> what you should actively be doing? And then I'll break down, you know, his time frame. You know, one to two, two to five, and then five to ten years. You know, <clears throat> what should you have accomplished in that time period? Should you be setting prepping goals like you do, you know, financially or... You know with your education or anything like that <clears throat> if you want to achieve something people tend to set goals and make plans to get there <clears throat> so I can understand the argument being made for we're already there uh, inflation is on track to surpass what it was in the 80s um, <clears throat> it's on track to not really slowed out. Uh, every metric I've seen from all of these uh, economic specialists, they've missed the mark for like the last six months. <clears throat> and it is common for, you know, their guesswork to be guessed wrong. But not, you know, this frequently. Uh... We've done the same thing with, you know, job estimation growth, and it's just not really changing. <clears throat> Tie that in with worker shortages, um, you know, without getting political. The Biden vaccine mandate was shut down at the uh, Supreme Court, <clears throat> but essentially what the Supreme Court said was, um, the executive branch does not have the power to implement a vaccine mandate. Um, <clears throat> so, from my understanding, it could go through the House and the Senate if they wanted it to. Uh, <clears throat> it could also uh, stand up with, you know, corporations doing it themselves, which... Some of them are doing it. <clears throat> and so that's causing a bigger divide. <clears throat> um, it's causing people to want to quit. Unions have said ex-workers will quit if we implement one. Uh, <clears throat> the news article I read said GM was one of the only massive countries that were scrapping the entire vaccine mandate. So it seems like they were just doing it because <clears throat> the government told them they needed to do it, which is always a good thing, right? Uh, <clears throat> so worker shortages make supply chain shortages, make stuff cost more, and <clears throat> it could seem like we're throwing crap at the fan already. But my guess is we're still 10 plus years away. <clears throat> and the reason why I say that is, you know, we're, we're due for another global conflict just based off of the uh, statistics of it. <clears throat> I think it's Thucydides Trap is the saying that, you know, we had uh, the American Revolution roughly... 70 years later, 
<clears throat> it's either 70 or 80, I forget what metric they use. Uh, it is 80. Because then we had the <clears throat> American Civil War ending in 1865, World War One, World War Two, uh, and they say we're due for the next big one. And <clears throat> it's not going to be based off of exactly the same superpowers from that time period. But it basically is. <clears throat> uh, so, you know, I think that's one of the things that could make crap hit the fan. Uh, I think I need a little bit more data from the economy. A little bit more than, you know, <clears throat> a virus that scared everyone to shut down their businesses. Which... I'm going to continue using Mike Rose analogy for this. Uh, you know, the bombing of Britain during the Battle of London during World War II. Uh, <clears throat> they would hide in their bomb shelters and subway stations. Uh, but at one point, everyone was told, look, bombs are still coming down. People are still dying. Uh, but we're not going to wither away in holes in the ground. Uh, <clears throat> you know, we've got to keep the lights on, keep people fed, you know, continue society. So, if that's the case, then uh, they did that <clears throat> within weeks. Uh, people coming out and you know, getting their stuff done, and if you died, you died. Uh, I'm not saying we should normalize uh, people dying from a disease, <clears throat> but the one comment I will add is roughly the same amount of people in the U.S. die every year um, due to complications from obesity, uh, I don't see a mandate on exercise being a requirement, cardio, <clears throat> uh, but <clears throat> I digress, uh, the pandemic, you know, that everyone is freaking out about. <clears throat> I guess you could feel like you're uh, having crap hit you in the face coming out of the fan, depending on where you live. Um, <clears throat> and I do say that very seriously. <clears throat> um, again, saying apolitical. Um, there are certain states that I think have become like Britain at least during World War II, during the Blitz. <clears throat> and I think there are some states that there's good intentions. Because, <clears throat> you know, if monetarily the government could do it, if they could tell every single person in the United States, <clears throat> you had to stay home for a week. Let's make it 10 days, just because of uh, <clears throat> the old, you know, quarantine amount. Or you can make it two weeks to be, you know, the fully safest. That's what they were doing in the beginning. Uh, if you could afford to pay everyone in the United States what they need. Uh, so, if you gave every single person $10... <clears throat> including kids, why not? 330 million. That's 3 billion. If you gave a $100, that's 30 billion. A thousand? 300 billion. Oh, and this is, you know, <clears throat> one time payment. 
uh, definitely seems a lot more effective than what they did. <clears throat> but if you could manage to get every single person in the United States to stay home, <clears throat> you get rid of the virus here in the U.S. People still got to travel the world. You can't tell the entire world to just sit still for two weeks. Uh, <clears throat> and you can't tell the United States to sit still for two weeks. Because it's not just paying the people, it's all of the infrastructure that requires, you know, tens of millions of people to work every single day. <clears throat> you know, police officers don't get the weekend off. Doctors don't. Uh, electricians, plumbers, garbage men, <clears throat> all of these different jobs, you can't just tell people to sit home. And the ones that you can tell people to sit home, <clears throat> uh, it's it gets complicated. Uh, but the point I'm trying to make here is, in my opinion, I don't believe <clears throat> this is something that's going to go away. Um, I think if they marketed the shot differently, <clears throat> uh, you know, because the uh, pandemic is, the virus involved in it is very similar to <clears throat> a cold or flu virus, um, and you get a yearly shot for that, uh, at least a lot of people do. <clears throat> Typically, the old, the immunocompromised, and the young get flu shots. Everyone else, if you don't get the flu that year, cool. If you get it, you feel bleh <clears throat> for a few days, and then you move on. Um, for that same category, pretty similar with the current virus. I'm not saying it's exactly the same, and one is better than the other, but <clears throat> the World Health Organization you know, they've had doctors come out and say uh, that a fourth booster should not be your strategy to containing the spicy flu. <clears throat> so, what they're saying is <clears throat> they've punched another hole in the logic of roughly half of our country. Uh, <clears throat> I've gone down a really deep rabbit hole on why half of you feel good about where you live and <clears throat> you could probably say that we're not in a crap hits the fan. And some of you, you're like, dude, the crap's been hitting the fan for six months or a year or several years, you know, what rock are you hiding under? <clears throat> uh, but... If you're in one of those situations, your prepping goal should be uh, find a new job in a new state and <clears throat> you're not putting money into rice and beans and guns and ammo and water storage. You're putting money into a U-Haul to get out of there. Um, you know, a very... I can tell you the brief topic of another news article I read. Um, Texas had the highest percentage of U-Haul one-way rentals. Florida came in second. Tennessee came in third. Uh, California had the highest record of outgoing <clears throat> one-way rentals. U-Haul had a mass caravan bringing trucks back to California for the people that want to move around the state. <clears throat> That's your prepping goal right there. Between California, Chicago area, and New York, um, those places tend to have the uh, strictest rules that don't really align with libertarianism. So, <clears throat> get out of there. Don't mess with it. That's your prepping goal. Uh, if you're the person that thinks we're three to five years away, and that's also a good category to think of, 
uh, because by that point, uh, we'll have another presidential election. And I think those can be some of the most spicy times in history for us, especially recently with the amount of, you know, polarization. It's a, it's a big word. Uh, it's just a time period where, you know, I can't remember the last election that one side or the other didn't complain about. Oh, I'm being very much serious. Um, I mean, I do think Obama's first election, uh, there was, you know, a little bit of argument, but <clears throat> Bush Jr., uh, Clinton, Bush Sr., Obama, Trump, you know, from both sides there have been complaints and, oh, this wasn't real or, you know, there's no way they could have won at this, you know, stage in the game. So, lots of arguing, lots of pointing fingers, and while the politicians, um, you know, can argue with each other all the time and then, you know, go out to eat together afterwards, uh, it typically pisses off enough of the voter base that they do something. Uh, so... I think the three to five year time period, what you should be doing, what you should be thinking about as a prepper is how close to self-sufficiency can I get to? Um, I actually think that'll be a great next video is plotting out uh, the property that I have because I went to Lowe's the other day to get a vanity uh, countertop supplies, so stain and other stuff. And Home Depot already has their peach, nectarine, and apple trees out. Uh, in my area, we still are dealing with, um, you know, freezing weather. Um, actually, Thursday, Friday, Saturday of this week, we'll have freezing nights. I think the lowest is 27 or 28, uh, so I don't want to plant the fruit trees until we're done with our freezes uh, and planting them as early in the season as you possibly can uh, will help ensure that you don't have to constantly wrap them up and check on them in the winter. Because I got my limited lime tree in in about July, I think. Uh, and I watered them heavily and they bloomed and did great. Don't think they're going to survive this winter. They're looking okay, but, you know, we'll see come springtime. But, uh, make a goal on becoming self-sufficient. I'll, uh, write out my goal plan. Um... And your self-sufficiency plan could involve, you know, moving. Uh, mine might involve a decent amount of driving because where the big plot of land is that I can do excessive livestock. It's about 15 minutes away. Uh, you know, the only thing I can accomplish at my house now is rabbits and chickens. Um... But I can also accomplish the orchard that I'd like on the side of the house. Uh, and probably doing a garden this year. So uh, getting the orchard in, we'll deal with uh, the fruits that we want. And the garden will provide the vegetables. <clears throat> After that, it's chickens and rabbits. Um, but I'll draw a, a, a layout of what I've got to work with. And I guess that might be the next video, uh, unless something newsworthy pops up and I gotta make a video about that first. But I think we're starting to rant more in this video, uh, 
So I'll end it here. Uh, just small recap. I think, you know, 10 plus years, that's what we got to worry about. I think it'll be a next global conflict. Uh, the people that think we're in, you know, crap hitting you in the face right now is probably because of where you live. Uh, so your prepping goal is GTFO. Uh, the one to two year, I can maybe believe it if I get a little bit more information on the economy. Uh, the three to five year, <clears throat> my, you know, my possible scenario is more political strife uh, following another presidential election. Uh, but it's mostly that five to ten year that, you know, I'm optimistic. And, you know, if he had a category that said 10 plus, probably would have picked 10 plus. But that's all I got for you. Uh, like, subscribe, hit the little bell, do all those things. Uh, comment down below. Uh, do you think we're in a crap hitting you in the face scenario? Or what is your timeline for when this will happen? Catch you in the next one.